Hey there, my name is Kaylee. Welcome to your lesson on elements, compounds, and mixtures. Before watching this video, you should be familiar with the concepts covered in the What is Matter lesson. In this video, you will learn the difference between an element, a compound, and a mixture. But before we dive headfirst into the different classifications of matter, let's first get comfortable with their meanings. An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into a simpler type of matter and consists of only one kind of atom. A compound is formed from atoms of different elements. The different atoms are joined when chemical bonds form and the atoms stick together so strongly that the compound behaves like one substance. The chemical compound formed depends upon what atoms it is made of and how they're joined together. A mixture is a substance in which two or more substances are mixed but not chemically joined together, meaning a chemical reaction has not occurred. Mixtures can be easily separated and the substances in the mixtures keep their original properties. Everywhere we look, we are surrounded by matter. Matter is made up of millions of atoms and molecules that come together to form larger things like your backpack, your best friend, and even planet Earth. Matter includes the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the chairs we sit on. However, to better understand matter, we have to have a way to describe it and classify it. To do this, let's take a closer look at elements. Elements are the building blocks for all matter in the world. Did you know that when you're breathing, you're actually inhaling elements? The air you breathe is made up of many elements like nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. Elements are everywhere. Here is a fun pop quiz. I bet you already know something about elements. Which one of these four pictures is an element? A, B, C, or D? That's right, C is an element. An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler parts and consists of only one kind of atom. For example, the element gold cannot be broken down into anything other than gold. During the California gold rush, if a 49er kept striking gold with his pickaxe, the pieces would get smaller, but each piece would always be gold. It's important to note though, that just because elements are all made from the same kind of atoms, they can still exist in different forms. This depends on their temperature. So they could be solid, liquid, or gas. Each element has its own unique set of properties different from the set of properties of any other element. You can think of it as its own unique elemental fingerprint. For example, the element iron is a solid that is attracted by a magnet. It can also be made into a magnet like the compass needle. On the other hand, the element neon is a gas that gives off a brilliant glow when electricity flows through it. These signs light up because they contain neon. Now let's take a closer look at what we've learned in this lesson so far. What do you think would happen if two or more elements reacted with one another like sulfur and iron? If you said a compound is formed, then you are right. A compound is formed when two or more elements are chemically combined. It's important to note that the new compound form will have different properties than the elements that make it up. For example, hydrogen and oxygen are both gases, but they form liquid water when they combine. Water is a compound because it is made up of two or more elements, oxygen and hydrogen. Here are some other examples of elements combining to create compounds. Sodium, a soft, silvery, and highly reactive metal in the presence of air, will react with chlorine a yellowish greenish toxic gas to form the compound sodium chloride, or as you may know it, table salt. Wanna have some real life fun with your newfound science knowledge? The next time you're at dinner, 
wow your family members by asking them to pass the sodium chloride. Carbon, a non-metal solid, reacts with hydrogen and oxygen to form the compound glucose, which is a type of sugar found in your grandma's secret chocolate chip cookie recipe. When elements create a compound, they always join in a specific ratio. For example, the ratio of liquid water is two hydrogens to one oxygen. If a compound has a different ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, then it's not water. Glucose, the type of sugar found in your favorite cookie, has a ratio of six carbons to 12 hydrogens to six oxygens. The compound of glucose will always have this same ratio. Compounds are all around you, in the foods you eat, the books you read, and even your family members. Now that we've classified elements and compounds, let's talk about mixtures. Like a tall glass of ice cold lemonade, so refreshing on a hot day. Lemonade is a combination of lemon juice, water, and sugar. Do you know what kind of matter lemonade is? It's not an element because it consists of more than one substance. Is it a compound? No, because not all combined substances are compounds. Some, including lemonade, are what we call mixtures. This glass of lemonade is a mixture because it does not have fixed ratios of ingredients. For example, each time you make lemonade, it will have varying amounts of lemon juice and sugar, but it will always be lemonade. Other examples of liquid mixtures include salad dressing and even the blood in our bodies. Air is a mixture of gas, mainly nitrogen and oxygen, and this rock is a solid mixture. For example, imagine it's family movie night and you're in charge of making the snacks. You mix popcorn, sour candies, and chocolates in a bowl. The individual components, popcorn, sour candies, and chocolates can be easily separated and each component of the mixture doesn't change. You did a great job classifying matter. The next time you're cooking in the kitchen, swimming at the beach, or breathing in the fresh mountain air, keep an eye out for elements, compounds, and mixtures in action. See you next time, and remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.